Our brother Nam the Kano. I'm a Biafra by indication. Biafra, we can never, never deny our ancestry. Uh, this is Baby Aisha and what? persecuted in Nigeria and I wonder if Christians no longer have their fundamental human rights, rights to religion. I grew up in the north as an average Christian girl, an evil girl to be precise, and have witnessed a whole lot of war. In the north, Christians are always the target, even in election war. Christians are the target. Now coupled with one happening in southern Kaduna, Christians are the target of this Muslim neighbors. The funny part is that this place, that is the Southern Kaduna, is not their home. And they kill, this, they kill Christians in their own home. And I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. But it's not only in our own Nigeria. I don't know. Yes, I'm speaking every language today. In case of people in the room, I want our cousin in the Bobani, in the Christians in Amigua, who is like, if you know, Mazi, Kilene, Mazi, Kilena, Pazu, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, we have to address these issues and know what is happening. We really need to know. I grew up in the north and I have lived half of my years there, scared of my life. Anywhere I get scared. You get yourself, you carry weapons and everything to that is so you're not mind killing your own house. And finally you say that we are in we 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 they're talking about peace and everything. So so that brings me to my topic today on Christian's persecution in Nigeria. And I have a guest that will speak on that. My name is Queen Mado and this is BVI Channel One Hot Seat. Stay tuned. Hello, sir. You're welcome to BVI Channel One Hot Seat. May we know you? Well, I'm Apostle James Induchem Bazurike. All right. You're welcome, sir. And today's topic is on Christians being persecuted here in Nigeria. We have few questions we need to tackle. Okay. You're welcome. Nigeria is now being rated as the top countries that Christians are being persecuted. What are the Christian leaders doing about it? Well, um, I, I, I personally don't think that the, the Nigerian Christian leaders are doing much. Um, I have personally written an article about the uh, Christian religious leaders in Nigeria, the CAN, Christian Association of Nigeria, and the PFN. But they are sitting idly while Muslims kill Christians. People talk about things in the Quran and they are beheaded. And nobody talks about it. We have had several religious crises that have consumed thousands of lives of Christians up there in the north by Muslims. And the Nigerian government has not addressed these things, even up to now. So, Christians in Nigeria are going through hell. Not just persecution, we are being marginalized and denied of our rights. The blessings that God has bestowed on us, the Muslims does not allow us to enjoy them. So these are the things that the international community should look into and address them accordingly. Thank you. There is a statement that related to the Vice President that Christians should emulate Christ. 
that even if they are being killed, they should not retaliate. What's your perspective about that? Well, Christ did say if you are being killed, you should, should do nothing. He said if you are slapped, our people should be very careful about words. Christ said if you are slapped on the other cheek, turn the other. He didn't say if you are killed, you should keep quiet. I wish somebody invest my home with uh, an AK-47 as the full and his men are going about. And they come to me, come to my house, and they kill my wife, kill my children, and they expect me to fold my hands. I must be an irresponsible father. And these are religious leaders who are supposed to be the father to their congregation. They call them father, they call them daddy. And tell me how a father will sit idly, fold his hands, and watch a stranger come into his house and kill his own family and raise his house down and he keeps quiet. Maybe he runs away. So where is he running to? I have the right as a Christian to defend myself against anyone that wants to kill me because I need to live to proclaim Christ. God himself said in Exodus that he is the God of war. So if I am a child of God, I should be a child of war also. Because a lion will always be get a lion. Okay, sir. So, so what's your take on Apostle Suleiman's statement? His statement is in order. He just told the Christian community to defend themselves. So if your job is to eliminate the Christians, the Christians will fold their hands and allow you to eliminate them just like that. So in the times of Christ, there were no Muslims anywhere in the world. And today we have them all over the place. Killing people on a daily basis. Using all kinds of uh, devices. Explosives. To kill people. And I don't think any reasonable human being should sit at the and watch these sons of Ishmael unleash mayhem on people. It's not acceptable. Suleiman was in order. And I am joining him to say that what he said is right. We must defend ourselves. Okay. We will live, we have to live to declare the gospel. Okay. So what could be the solution to all this problem? The solution, if I may say, is that their friends should be allowed to be on their own. It is even an abomination for the children of the bond woman to be a rule over the children of the free woman. The world bond woman being Hagar and the free woman being Sarah. We should be allowed to rule ourselves. The Muslims up there in the north, they have the Sharia government. So we should be allowed to have our own government and determine by ourselves whether we should live together with the rest of the of the tribes in Nigeria. So living together in Nigeria should be by consent and not by force. So we are being forced to live together with the rest of Nigeria. And we are saying no to it that we want to be on our own. We want Biafra. So you mean uh, Biafras are predominantly Christians? Yes, of course. Biafras are predominantly Christians. If we have Muslims at all, in Biafra, they are insignificant. They are very, very few. Okay. So what's your take on the Southern Kaduna crisis? Well, it has always been like that. Kaduna has been a melting pot of a religious crisis. It has been like that over the years. The Muslims have been killing, have been killing from uh, my Tashidar riot to one other riot to one other religious riot. Sometimes they will just finish from their mosque on Friday and they will march on into the streets and begin to kill Christians. It's unfair. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very, very much. It's a privilege to have you here. This is it on today's BBI Hot Fit. And if you enjoyed our program today, just stay tuned to join us next week. My name is Queen Madu and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.